Earthbound was in trouble. The game had been in dire straits for a long time now. After years and years of development, it felt like the team were no closer to getting the game working than they had been when they'd started. When they'd begun developing for Nintendo's new hardware, the SNES, they'd been among the first to get the chance to build on this exciting, advanced gaming platform. Now, many other projects had come and gone, and the little team were still struggling to make something that even remotely worked. The project's leader, advertising superstar Shigesato Itoi, was struggling to get his team organised enough to be able to complete Earthbound's inner workings. The game's designers and artists had built a huge library of assets that were theoretically complete, but the game's coding was such a mess that nothing seemed to work right. Earthbound had become increasingly expensive, and nobody knew how it could be fixed. All hope seemed lost. The higher-ups at Nintendo were getting ready to bring the axe down on the entire project, and cancel Earthbound outright. Then, just as Shigesato and his team began preparing for the worst, the day was saved, when a programming genius floated down from on high to fix everything. This is the story of how Satoru Iwata single-handedly saved one of the most iconic role-playing games in Nintendo's history. Nintendo's choppy approach to localising Shigesato Itoi's first game, Mother, probably should have come as a warning sign. The game had sold well in Japan, but translation into English for sale overseas had proven difficult. Nintendo wasn't exactly well known for their role-playing games at the time, and such a big, complicated game with so much text required a large amount of time and effort to perfectly translate into another language. What's more, Mother was filled with cultural references and jokes that didn't exactly translate well into foreign languages. Many at Nintendo wondered whether the game's appeal would even carry over into Western markets in the first place. While the translation was eventually completed, Nintendo actually decided against releasing the game, instead choosing to bury their translation within their archives, and move on to different projects. It didn't help that Mother was coming right at the end of the Nintendo Entertainment System's lifespan, and the company didn't want to distract customers from the new, shiny Super Nintendo that was the focus of their efforts at the time. This was reflected in the development of Shigesato's second game as well. Mother 2 began life on the Famicom, but as Nintendo's efforts shifted to the console's successor, the team was told that they'd have to scrap much of what they'd already done in order to begin anew on the more complicated hardware. This, it proved, was to be the first of many delays to the project. The problem was that Shigesato wasn't a game developer. He had come to Nintendo as a writer, actor and advertiser, with ambitions of making something immersive and interactive that was, above all, a story-based experience. Even with one game under his belt, Shigesato wasn't particularly computer literate. He left the majority of the technical decisions to other members of his team, while focusing on getting the story and the visuals right. This even extended to the way the game's design was laid out. Shigesato dictated the entirety of his game's script, while another member of his team wrote the dialogue into the computer. Sometimes, when Shigesato saw his words on the screen in front of him, he'd scrap them, getting his typist to delete them, and trying again with another line. Sometimes, he'd spell things out letter by letter, especially when it came to the weird names of some of his game's characters. While this wasn't particularly efficient, the most useful element of Shigesato's writing method was that he could get instant feedback on what he was writing. As he spoke, he'd watch his typist's face to see the response he got, if his typist laughed, smiled, or welled up with tears, Shigesato knew that he was on the right lines. This process ended up taking time, but Shigesato figured it was probably a lot quicker than agonising over every individual line in the game without having such tangible feedback as he wrote the script. Unfortunately, it also meant that while the project's story and art assets were progressing well, the technical underpinnings of the game weren't falling into place as they should. An almost entirely new team of developers and programmers had been assembled for Mother 2, so there wasn't a lot of experience on the first game of the series to draw from. These developers were having to figure things out from scratch, especially after the jump to the Super Famicom. With Shigesato storming ahead on the game's design elements, 
his team of programmers found themselves directionless, and they were trapped going in circles as they attempted to transform the game's ambitious, complicated role-playing foundations and expansive world into something that could be coded, organised, and built upon. Years went by without progress. While Shigesato had finished his game's story and designs, there was no framework to attach this to. Every attempt from the programmers to build the systems that were needed seemed to end in disaster. Finally, after a lot of agonising work, Nintendo's higher-ups began growing tired of the game's many, many delays and hiccups. Shigesato and his team prepared for the worst, as they anticipated the cancellation that was drawing near. But Mother 2 didn't get cancelled. Instead, the project was saved at the last minute. Satoru Iwata, president of HAL Laboratory, another company that worked closely with Nintendo on various games, volunteered to help with the project. He wasn't going to step on Shigesato's toes, but he knew how to program a game, how to manage a team of coders, and how to fix projects that were going horribly wrong. Shigesato accepted Satoru's help, expecting the seasoned programmer to sweep in and repair all of the holes in his game's code. But instead, Satoru suggested something far more radical. In order to get Earthbound to the point where it could be saved, the entire coding team would need to throw away nearly everything they'd done thus far, and start work all over again. It seemed ludicrous to throw away so much work, and it left Shigesato with a tough decision to take. Did they keep working to patch up their existing game engine, or should the team ditch five years of coding work in order to trust Satoru Iwata. Either way, the team had a lot of work ahead of them. Satoru Iwata wasn't pushy about his plans for Earthbound. He'd looked over everything that Shigesato and the team had produced thus far, and he wasn't sure that continuing with the existing code was the best strategy. As far as Satoru could tell, it would be easier to rebuild the entire game with a better foundation than to continue struggling with a system that wasn't fit for purpose. Nevertheless, Satoru wasn't about to tell Shigesato what to do. This wasn't his game, and he wasn't in charge. It wasn't Satoru's place to wade in and begin demanding that the team scrap everything they'd already done. Instead, he took Shigesato aside, and respectfully gave him some advice. If they continued to use the existing system, it would take two more years to finish Earthbound, but if the team started afresh with Satoru to guide them, they could complete the project in half that time. Either way, Satoru insisted, he would support Shigesato in his decision. This was his passion project, his baby. Satoru would be there to assist him, no matter what he decided. Shigesato really appreciated Satoru's honesty, and his gentle, supportive attitude. He accepted the suggestion. Shigesato admitted that he didn't have the best grasp of the technical aspects of the game-making. If his friend felt that he could get things done quicker by restarting the coding, then perhaps it was best to trust someone who had a lot more experience in this field. And so, Satoru set to work, but not in the way that Shigesato expected. Instead of tackling any of the big, gaping holes in the project, Satoru started coding a tool for implementing game content. Shigesato was confused. But Satoru was in his element. He presented the seemingly unimportant tool to the coding team, and showed them how it worked, then explained what they could build with it. Finally, he assigned them several tasks, and instructed them to use his self-made computing tool in order to achieve them. This kind of compartmentalised game-making blew Shigesato away, but he was also astounded by the way Satoru dealt with his team. For years, Shigesato had been trying to manage the group, organising their efforts into something cohesive, Satoru clearly had a plan in his head for how things should be organised, and could break down the project into smaller, more achievable chunks that he could then assign to groups within the larger team, in order to help things run smoothly. Everything Satoru said and did was presented with the utmost respect for the team's skills. He knew what they were capable of, and where they needed help in order to stretch themselves and achieve their goals. To a certain extent, Satoru was treating project management in the same way that he treated the process of coding. He had a desired outcome, and made sure to break down and organise the team's resources and talents in order to make it happen. The group's problem before had been in communication. They hadn't known specifically what they needed to do, and so they'd struggled to deliver the needed results. Satoru saw each member of the team as a process within a piece of code. 
Without clear instructions, they couldn't work as they needed to. Thus, Satoru didn't blame these coders for failing to build Earthbound the first time around. Shigesato had, very understandably considering his background, merely been unable to explain what they needed to do. Satoru provided the structure that the team needed to organise the code, and he left Shigesato to implement the specifics of his creative vision. The two made an excellent pair, and within no time at all, the looming threat of cancellation faded as Mother 2 began to take shape. Finally, the game was finished. In fixing the project, Satoru had managed to achieve in mere months what Shigesato had struggled to do in years. Shigesato was blown away with the speed and efficiency that his team were capable of with Satoru to guide them, and similarly, Satoru was very impressed with the deep, emotionally powerful story that Shigesato had created within his game. Mother 2 was released to Japan, and Earthbound hit American shelves not long after. The game became one of Nintendo's most iconic titles. While Earthbound initially struggled to find an audience in the West, in large part due to a bizarre marketing campaign that didn't do a great job of communicating the game's quirky, heartfelt yet comedic story, it took a few years for English-speaking fans to really engage with the game. Eventually, though, fans began to embrace the title in their millions. Earthbound became a phenomenon, with fans worldwide falling in love with its odd sense of humour, its complex themes, and its unique gameplay mechanics that were unlike anything gamers had seen before. All of the hard work that had gone into Earthbound paid off. Shigesato Itoi got to see his vision realised, as the game became a cultural touchstone for a generation of gamers. Satoru Iwata had saved the day, as he had done before, and would do many times again. His practical, caring, understanding managerial style, paired with his own coding brilliance, had helped turn an ailing project into one of Nintendo's greatest achievements. The moral of the story is that if at first you don't succeed, it doesn't mean you should give up. Sometimes, as we work to learn new skills, improve ourselves, and develop our talents, we may find ourselves hitting a wall as we're unable to continue progressing. It's easy, when trials come our way, to give up, throw in the towel, and decide that some things are just too hard to achieve. Or, alternatively, we might belligerently keep pushing forward, dead set in our ways, even though our stubbornness is getting in the way of our own success. It takes a lot of patience, wisdom, and self-control to change direction. Sometimes, all that we need is a fresh perspective and a new approach in order to overcome the pitfalls that stand between us and our goals. If you find yourself stuck, if you're not able to progress and develop as you'd like, and if you just can't quite get things to go your way, remember the example of Satoru Iwata. Sometimes, the best solution is to take a moment to breathe, take stock of your situation, and consider an alternative way to move forward. Seek help from others where necessary. Think hard about your goals and what needs to be done to achieve them. Sometimes, by trying a fresh approach to an old problem, you may find a solution that's been in front of you all along. <laughs>